So in an interesting turn of events, Apple on a Friday no less has released iOS and iPadOS 18.4 developer beta 1 for everybody to try out, test out and see exactly what's new. We're going to talk about all the new things that we see because there is one major change to one of Apple's first party applications. But then we're also going to talk about some of the things that we thought we were going to go with 18.4 that are being saved possibly for 18.5 or maybe even later. Let's get into it. So now before we continue, if you enjoy getting these timely and trendy videos, please make sure to subscribe and like the video because it helps kind of motivate us to make more videos like this one as they do come out in real time. So now let's figure out exactly what's new with 18.4. Well, all right, everyone, we are on 18.4 and to go into our photos, I'm gonna show you guys a screenshot of how big this is. We're looking at about 7.52 gigabytes. So give yourself a good 15 gigabytes of open space in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And I don't understand why it's so big. Normally the first betas of a brand new software is a little bit on the larger side, but there isn't much to show for it, but we will touch on exactly what everything comes with it. So we go into our settings, go into the about section. You can see that we're on 18.4 22E 5200S. So this is the first iteration, of course, like I mentioned, the first beta that we're going to be going with and dealing with with 18.4. So now there's a few new things to take into consideration. The first one that everybody's going to get is going to be for News Plus subscribers. So if we go into the News application, you can see that on the left-hand side, there's a brand new option called Food. This Food section is something that was added with 18.4. And again, you do need to be a News Plus subscriber. So you either pay for it separately or you pay for it via Apple One like I do. And it's basically a section for people to curate their own recipes, for people to post the recipes, for recipes to be kind of aggregated from different websites. So as you can see, this is from Good Housekeeping. And it's basically just a food centric section of the news application for recipes, for things that maybe top list of what to make at home and whatever the case may be. But I think the UI is actually very beautiful. So this featured recipe right here, crispy fish with saba and snap peas. You click on here and it looks beautiful on the iPad. So you have this nice little effect right here and you have a couple options. So the first one is you can read the entire story, which is how it's going to be listed on the actual article or the website. Then you have the ability to press cook, save or share. So if you press on cook, it basically gives you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to actually get this done. So as you can see, you have your directions up here, your ingredients on the left. So you can click on that ingredients piece and see exactly what you need. So here we need six ounces of noodles, eight ounces of sugar snap peas, you know, three tablespoons of rice vinegar, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can see the directions where it says to cook the noodles for two minutes, less than the package directions, add snap peas, and it gives you everything that you need step by step. This almost kind of looks like the lyrics section of Apple Music. But what's cool about this is if you tap this, it'll actually start a timer for you. So you press start timer and it's kind of indicated and predetermined for you. So at least there is some sort of integration in here, which is nice to see. And as you can see, the timer is on and you'll know that a timer is on when it's highlighted in yellow. And then if we go down here, you'll see that it shows up as a live activity. We're going to turn this off because obviously we're not cooking anything. But if you keep going down, you get to see the rest of the directions in order to have this recipe done. You also have the ability to save the recipe. So there is a save section. So if you have saved recipes right here, you can see that it is now saved on here. And if you hold here and long press, you have some options here, like some fast actions for cooking, unsave, share, open in a new window, share recipe, copy link, etc. So if we go back here, we'll tap in here to get the final one. And of course, you have your share sheet to be able to share this to other people and be able to see that. And then the last piece of anatomy of this section is going to be if you scroll down, you get all that information that I mentioned just in a different view. So you have all your ingredients on the left hand side, you have all your directions on the right hand side, and then you have some suggestions based on something like this to give you something more relevant or give you something that's kind of similar to what you are cooking already from different publications. So if I want to click on this one, you get the same exact situation just from a different publication and a different meal. Now, one new thing that was added to iPadOS 18.4 is that finally we got the new mail application. So if you go down here, type in mail, you can see that we now have the same kind of structure that iOS got with the 18.0 update by being able to kind of separate everything and organizing it a little bit better. So as you can see, we have your primary, we have your transactions, your updates, as well as your promotions and notifications. And it's just a little bit more well organized overall. I'm not actually a mail app user. I use the Gmail application, funny enough, but it is nice to see but it is nice to see that that has now come to iPadOS because I thought we were gonna have to wait until iPadOS 19 for that. One last thing that we found is if you go into your control center, long press to edit your control center, add a control, you now have a new section called ambient music. So this is gonna be a fast track for ambient music. If we add in the chill section right here, this is what it's gonna look like. We tap on here and now we'll have some ambient music playing in the background. So just a faster way to get to that stuff. Some other things that I wanted to mention real quick is that the Vision Pro got some updates big time. 
we're probably gonna have a whole Vision Pro video later on, but basically Vision Pro will be getting Apple intelligence in April. But one of the things that came alongside of that is that now we're gonna have two things. First is that the iPhone is gonna have a dedicated management app for your Vision Pro. Very similar to probably how the Apple Watch application works. It's gonna have curated things based on the Vision Pro, specifically for the Vision Pro, how to manage things on the Vision Pro, probably change out your app layout, etc. And then on the iPad specifically, this is gonna work for the iPhone as well, but the iPad did get a new guest mode. So you're basically able to do almost like a guided access situation where you're able to kind of share your Vision Pro with somebody else that's a guest user and then manage what they're able to see, what they're not able to see, and then also get a viewing on what they are watching in real time. So if you've ever been to an Apple store for a Vision Pro demo and you see the associates or the employees using an iPad mini or some sort of iPad to manage your experience, it's gonna be very similar, just a little bit more user-friendly. So now what's missing from 18.4? that I thought we were gonna get, it's going to be a lot more of those Apple intelligence features that were promised early on, which is gonna be things like on-screen awareness, the personal context, and the in-app actions. Right now, Apple intelligence, again, it's getting a little bit better, especially when you're asking it kind of just regular things and it's getting a little bit smarter, but when it comes to actually taking action for you, it's still not there yet, even though we were told that it was gonna happen. It was supposed to come out with 18.4, but now we're probably holding off until 18.5, so we're still not able to say, hey, move this note over and put it into an email, or make sure to look into Apple Maps, find the best restaurants, and then send it to a friend. Those are all examples of things that do not work as of right now. But now the last thing I did wanna bring up is going to be battery life. So we go into the iPadOS battery life section, go over the last 10 days. You can see that we're dealing with almost three hours of screen on time, but if we go on a day like this one, where we used up about 75%, I'm getting about six hours of screen on time with using up 75% meaning that I probably can get a full eight hours of some intensive use. And you can see that most of my use here was with LumaFusion, with a USB-C accessory, meaning that I had my SSD plugged in and I was working off of the SSD. So I do a lot of intensive tasks on my M4 iPad Pro, so the fact that I can get eight-ish hours out of those intensive tasks is gonna be great for me. And if I'm doing some more minimal tasks, like just content consumption, I can easily get 10 hours out of this M4 iPad Pro, if not more. But those are all the changes that we noticed. So the big one is gonna be the food and the mail app. And then of course, some Vision Pro tidbits in there as well. Let's finish up this video. So that'll just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, there weren't too many changes that came with 18.4, with a lot of things still missing from an Apple intelligence standpoint. We did get a new food section in the News Plus app for News Plus subscribers, which is a nice little touch and adds another kind of content generation machine for people to be able to post that type of content and also consume that kind of content. But outside of that, there weren't too many infrastructure or software changes that really kind of helped from the Apple intelligence standpoint, which unfortunately might come at a later date. But that'll do it for this video. Like I said, if you enjoyed, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave a little dolphin in the comments down below if you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody. Have a good weekend.